Hi everyone, Dr. Olivia Joseph here. So I have had many, many people ask me, why do I recommend magnesium supplementation but not calcium supplementation? So the honest answer is because I see a lot of magnesium deficiency and I see very little calcium deficiency. So let me put this in perspective for you. If you have a blood test done and it turns out your magnesium levels are low, you're typically immediately put on a magnesium IV so that you don't have a heart attack. If you're a pregnant woman and you have low magnesium levels, you fall into a category of preeclampsia and that is a very high risk of death, not just to the mother, but also to the baby. So she's immediately put on magnesium IV during the delivery. So by the time your levels are low on blood work, they're extremely low. Now, magnesium is used by muscle, bone, and nerve tissue. All muscles need magnesium to relax. And it's pretty rare nowadays that I see patients that are just too relaxed, too mellow, where their muscles are just too buttery. It's usually the exact opposite. We're gonna talk about why. Where I see more high calcium levels on blood work today than I have ever seen in my 13 years in practice. Now this is a problem because when you have high blood calcium levels, you might have a problem with the parathyroid. And to be perfectly honest with you, I've been treating patients with thyroid dysfunction or thyroid imbalance for my 13 years in practice, and I saw very, very little parathyroid disease early in practice. I see an awful lot more of parathyroid disease today than I ever have. So high calcium levels are not a good thing. Doesn't mean your body is using the calcium, doesn't mean your bones are using the calcium. High calcium levels can cause calcification of organs and glands, particularly the thyroid. That's why if you have a bad thyroid, you're not allowed to eat a certain time around the time you take your medication is because you don't want nutrients like calcium to get to the thyroid and cause calcification. So why are we so magnesium deficient? A big reason, calcium, because calcium and magnesium are both minerals. We started recommending calcium supplementation back in the 70s for osteopenia and osteoporosis. The problem is the research over the last 40 years show that calcium consumption does not reduce risk of osteopenia or osteoporosis. So the doctors started to change their recommendations in the last five, six years saying, well gosh, if we're giving our patients calcium and their bone density is not improving, or if we're giving our patients calcium and the rate of osteoporosis is going up and not down, why is that? So now they're recommending vitamin D and calcium together. You may have heard this on one of my videos already. The problem is, is vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. Calcium is a mineral, they don't go together. Many households have a dog and a cat and they're not gonna mate because they're totally different species. Well, when minerals and fat soluble vitamins get together, they don't work together because they're in a totally different family. When you take vitamins, there's minerals, there's fat soluble vitamins, water soluble vitamins, amino acids, and then you have your herbs and food grade herbs. You've got to understand that what nutrition is when you take supplements is it's biochemistry. It's all it is. It's simple if you just understand the biochemistry. Calcium and magnesium do work together, but they work at different times of the day. You see, calcium causes muscle contractions. When do you want your muscles to contract? During the day when you're using them. When do you want your muscles to relax? At night, when you fall asleep, when you stay asleep, magnesium helps you absorb calcium. Magnesium helps you absorb water. Magnesium calms nerves and shuts down the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight system. So even if I have a patient that needs to take calcium for one reason or another, I don't give it to them the same time of day. Now, don't take calcium without magnesium, but you can take magnesium without calcium. So magnesium deficiency is so prevalent because we are putting insane amounts of 
acid things in our mouth and in our body. And your body doesn't like having an acid pH, so how it's going to neutralize it is it's going to pull minerals out of bone, muscle, and nerve tissue to neutralize that acid pH. And magnesium is great at alkalizing your system. So your body will take magnesium out of muscle tissue because it's easier than taking calcium out of bone tissue. So that's one reason why we have magnesium deficiency is because we live such an acid lifestyle. Two, magnesium is not rich in food at all. It's rich in raw cocoa powder and pumpkin seeds, but the quantity of these foods you would need to eat in order to get your daily minimum of magnesium is probably not gonna happen unless you eat about a cup of pumpkin seeds a day or raw, raw cocoa powder on a daily basis. I had a patient yesterday say to me, well, there's some magnesium in my multivitamin. Well, here's what you need to understand. Magnesium is a big molecule. Can't fit a big molecule in a small pill. So no multivitamin on planet Earth has enough magnesium because you can't fit big molecules in small pills. So you're always going to need to take some additional uh, magnesium. Plus, if you take multivitamins, ideally you take them during the day. And if you take magnesium, ideally you take it at night. But another reason why we see so much magnesium deficiency is because we've put calcium in everything. Bread is fortified with calcium. Cereal, fortified with calcium. Milk, fortified with calcium. Orange juice, fortified with calcium. Well, guess what? Calcium doesn't need to be fortified into all these things because calcium is naturally occurring in green things. Why did milk have calcium and vitamin D? Because the cows used to graze pastures eating grass, which is loaded with calcium, in the sun, which loaded the milk with vitamin D. So now we're fortifying these things into everything, but yet we're still seeing tons and tons of vitamin D deficiency, mainly because we're fortifying everything with D2, not D3. D3 is bioavailable, meaning you can absorb a lot of it. D2 is not. Second thing, we're using a type of calcium for increasing bone density. That's not for bone density. So there are very specific types of calcium for bone density if that's why you're taking calcium. Same is true for magnesium. Not all magnesium is created equally. I only use magnesium glycinate with my patients and virtually every integrative and functional medicine practitioner uses magnesium glycinate. We don't like to use the other forms of magnesium because they're not bioavailable, meaning you're not gonna absorb it well. I always use magnesium at night and magnesium likes to play with some certain vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and herbs. Um, I use magnesium quite a bit with passion flower valerian root and theanine. These are herbs and amino acids that also promote calmness without negative effects. This helps you to fall asleep, stay asleep, get into a deeper sleep, absorbs your, absorb your water better so that you don't bloat so much and your weight doesn't fluctuate as much. So magnesium does combine or pair well with some things, but not particularly calcium at night. So if, if you're taking a calcium, make sure it has magnesium in it. But in general, I'm only recommending magnesium to my patients. I'm recommending vitamin D to my patients, but I'm not recommending calcium as a general rule. There are some exceptions to that rule, of course. When I see patients with low bone density, I am testing their vitamin D levels. Um, we're checking hormone levels sometimes because you have estrogen receptors on your bone sites. I'm adding the right type of calcium for bone density, and I'm always adding magnesium as well. And that's probably where I've seen the most profound difference in my practice. 13 years ago, essential fatty acid deficiency was probably one of the greatest deficiencies I saw in practice. 13 years ago, raw almonds, extra virgin olive oil, raw nuts and seeds were not trendy and popular. They've become much more so along with salmon in just the last few years. So essential fatty acid deficiency was huge 13 years ago. Now what I'm seeing more than ever is magnesium deficiency because very few people are supplementing with it. Very few people are eating it. 
Many people are depleting their bodies of it by eating a high acid diet or drinking highly acidic drinks. So your body always wants to restore a neutral pH and it's going to do whatever it needs to do and make you deficient in whatever it needs to make you deficient in to restore that natural pH. So hopefully now you understand why magnesium is so important to me. I joke, you might have heard this before on, on one of my videos, that uh, they're going to have to pry my magnesium out of my hand when I go to the grave because that is the single supplement that I notice the biggest difference with being on it and being off of it. Um, for me, like most of the world, I'm go, 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 go. And a lot of people interpret that as high stress. Well, what that go, go, go lifestyle does is it activates your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight. Now that system is supposed to be active during the day, but it's also supposed to shut down at night and magnesium helps activate your parasympathetic nervous system, shut down your sympathetics so that your sympathetics have a chance to rest. That means you have great energy all day long and great sleep quality at night. And for me personally, I notice a huge difference in my sleep quality when I'm off magnesium a few days. Because to be honest with you, I don't eat pumpkin seeds a lot. And I'm one of those people who doesn't really love chocolate. So I don't eat chocolate or use cocoa powder in my smoothies or, or just in general, I don't consume that stuff. So I'm not eating a lot of magnesium rich foods. I drink tea. I also drink coffee and I drink a ton of water. So I'm doing things that deplete magnesium from my system and I feel it's very important to replenish it. So I hope you enjoyed my tips on magnesium as well as what it pairs with and how these deficiencies are created in your body. And I look forward to sharing a lot more information on you on minerals, essential fatty acids, anti-inflammatory supplements as well. Thanks.